whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the abundant grace of God, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are visited in all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sin through the broken systems of us. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources. We fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Receive our words and your divine mercy. By the grace of God, through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Amen.
Spirit be with you all. And also with you. continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken, and speak truth to us in our confusion, that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall be such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you, from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be God. Thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. 
from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus taught them as one having authority. Who are the people who we grant the authority to make pronouncements that will change my life, guide me in my life, correct me in my ways and the choices I make? Take a doctor, for example. We prefer to seek out an authority in their field so that we get a clear, trustworthy diagnosis. We are willing to accept regimens of treatment and projections about our outlook if the word comes from a source that speaks with authority. Or take teachers. We've all had them, good ones and bad ones. The bad teachers used their authority to dominate. They let us know how much power they have or had over us, our lives, our minds, our schedules. The good teachers are those who teach with authority, who open our eyes. They open up mysteries. When class is over and the world is not the same anymore, understanding floods you inside. A new lightness lifts your step how to approach life or a specific subject. The world has changed and a new time has begun. 
We are still looking for teachers. We are looking for leaders, world leaders, whose authority we trust. Because we are still in search of a new time. We are in search of the knowledge and skill that will change our lives and make us whole, or even only a little more whole, purposeful, directed. We yearn to leave behind the confusion, the multitude of conflicting answers that we get. We yearn to, let, to leave behind the deception of political and economic answers that we have discovered do not provide clarity and wholesomeness. We yearn for deeper understanding to leave behind conflicting voices which let us make wrong decisions, decisions that in turn cause fear and loneliness. When it dawns on the people of Israel that their beloved, trusted teacher and leader Moses will not be with them forever, and that if they didn't have a mediator between them and God, to receive God's word, they would, in the directness of God's awesome, holy presence, simply burn up and perish. Moses comforts them, saying that there will be a new prophet for them. And prophets there were. We just met some of them recently again, Samuel and Jonah. And there were Elijah and Nathan and Isaiah and Jeremiah, Hosea, Joel, Amos, and all the others, the sages and wisdom scholars of the later centuries. God, the ultimate authority, does not leave us alone. And now we are in Capernaum, a small Jewish fishing village on the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus makes that his base in Galilee, not Nazareth from where he is. What we know about him is that he is filled with the Holy Spirit, bestowed with God's divine authority at baptism as the beloved Son. We know his one sentence of preaching, teaching, that he has uttered so far. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And we know he called four disciples. Simon, Peter, and Andrew actually are from Capernaum. It is the Sabbath day. Jesus steps onto that path that John the Baptizer prepared for him, the path made straight in the proverbial desert, hills made low, valleys lifted up. Jesus enters the synagogue, the community hall, where on the Sabbath the Torah is read and studied the Sabbath is a different time. It is always a new time, a day of rest and recreation, renewal. It is the day when the people remember the kingship of God, that God is the ultimate authority and that we people are not at the center of the universe. It is the day to remember God's purpose for creation, God's rule over creation. Into this Sabbath day, Jesus proclaims the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The hour has begun, sisters and brothers. The day of God's time and rule is here. Jesus teaches it with authority. 
and those with him in the synagogue are astounded. They know viscerally on the spot that all the skill, the wisdom, the scholarship, the reputation of their best revered authorities, their scribes, does not come close to, does not reach into this fulfilled time. The hour that has now begun, for which they all so yearn. They are filled with amazement. Just then in their synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit is there, and he cries out. Now, this is no coincidence. It is silent in the synagogue. Those present, those astounded, do not speak. Jesus' teaching provokes a powerful counterforce. An unclean spirit screams into the face of Jesus' proclamation, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Jesus exorcises the unclean spirit with a word. Silence. Be silent. Filled with the Holy Spirit of God, Jesus denies that unclean spirit its host, the poor man, in whom it had settled in place for so long. One last time, the man convulses and the spirit is gone, disempowered, not able to hold sway over this human life anymore. Silence and peace fill the synagogue. And all of a sudden there is space, there is room. People stir in amazement. They talk. Their tension and nervousness gives way. What is this? A new teaching with authority. God's hour has begun. The time is fulfilled. The news spreads throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. It truly is Sabbath today, God's day. The world is not the same anymore. Now the people in the synagogue are talking, brought out of silence to wonderment, recognition, knowing in a deep way they are engulfed in a true teaching moment. Can we, too, enter into this realm of authority, into Jesus' time, God's time, the full time? The Sabbath day in Capernaum is gone so long already. The good news is, dear congregation, that it is Sunday today. Sabbath is followed by Sunday, the eighth day of creation, the day in which we, the baptized, the church, join Sabbath recreation. We live in the continued presence of our risen Lord who meets his disciples in Galilee. If in Galilee, that can only mean also in our own homes, our own hometowns, our lives, our own specific time. A new time has begun indeed. We live in the presence of the risen Christ, who in dying destroyed the conflicting, convulsing forces of this world that still try to wield power and hold sway over us. The world is not the same anymore. Jesus' teaching opens the space for us to begin to share our questions, experiences, our stories of discovery, just like after every great, eye-opening, life-changing lesson. 
It is the time to share in amazement and wonderment the discovery that hope is still here. Hope has not disappeared even 11 months into the pandemic. In this new space and time, we may be surprised to find ourselves speaking with authority, calmly, attentively, heart to heart, Christ present. The hour is here. We do not always remember that we already live in the realm of Christ, of God's ultimate authority, but we do. Through us, the healing, life-giving authority of Christ changes the world, dispersing the confusion, the, bewil the bewilderment that has beset us, one by one, word by word, hope by hope. Christ met us in Galilee, and Christ meets us here. Amen. Together with all who celebrate their baptismal anniversary this week, Elizabeth, Jennifer, Bill, Susan, Bob, Virginia, Sydney, Ed, Carl, Heidi, Todd, Don, and John, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all people in need. For all who share the gospel and proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders, for the church and its ministries, let us pray. For all God's work and creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forests and farms, for all those tasked with protecting our natural resources and with all that exists, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wise leaders and tireless peacemakers, for those whose lives are threatened by violence, especially in Ethiopia, Burundi, and the Central African Republic, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all people during this pandemic, for families struggling to afford necessities, for all struggling with depression and thoughts of self-harm, for all who are working to end the pandemic, that God's life-giving rest and recovery emerge out of the shade of this present time. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the work of Search Homeless Services and our January mission offering, that our common ministry may reduce the plight of the poor and commit us to the well-being of our neighbors. Let us pray. For the wisdom and gifts we have received from our community, especially Joyce Klein on her 90th birthday, Paul Shank on his 92nd birthday, and the 50th wedding anniversary of Inda and Neil Imega, let us pray. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, those who are sick and hospitalized, those living with HIV and AIDS, those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry or homeless, and all in need, we lift our concerns for Erna Baum, Michael and Donna Harrison, Toby Harrison, Alan and Donna Dieter, and Nick Pentasis, and those we name in our hearts. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the covenant God made with us in the waters of baptism, in thanksgiving for the baptized who have died in the Lord. We remember Florence Muller on the one-year anniversary of her death. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Thank you. 
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen.